Let's talk about compression, especially parallel compression with a tiny French accent. I'm gonna explain to you the difference between insert compression and parallel compression, and we'll show you four ways you can apply a parallel compression in Cubase. Hello friends, Chris Elim here from Mixdown Online. Now before we start this video, if you've been watching my videos for quite a while, or this is your first time here on the channel, subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Also, if you enjoyed this video and that you think that the video is helpful, share and like. So now let's jump right in and first talk about the difference between insert compression and parallel compression. When I talk about insert compression, it's simply by adding a compressor on your channel as an insert plugin. That's it. And the goal of using a compressor as an insert is to control the dynamic range of a signal by bringing down the peaks of that signal. So that will reduce the dynamic range of your signal. Now, when we talk about parallel compression, now we're talking about, again, reducing the dynamic range of a signal, but instead of bringing down the peaks, it's gonna bring up the overall loudness of the signal or RMS level of your signal and it will leave the peaks alone and all that by making a copy of your signal and over compress that copy and then blend that copy with your dry signal and this is going to create parallel compression i'm going to show you everything you need to know on how to work that out in cubase now do we need parallel compression on everything Absolutely not. It all depends on your needs while mixing. So if you just need to bring down the peaks of the signal and control the dynamics, you're gonna use a compressor as an insert. But if you wanna add punch and energy to, uh, to drums or vocals, for example, parallel compression might be the way to go since you're blending the dry signal, so you're keeping your peaks uh, with the overcompressed signal, which is gonna bring up the overall loudness of your signal and will create a more punchier sound. So let's jump right in Cubase so I can show you four ways that you can work with parallel compression. Okay, so I have a raw drum recording and let's just focus on my drum bus. This is where I wanna add some parallel compression. So the first way I can apply parallel compression in Cubase is simply by inserting a compressor straight as an insert on my drum bus. In the case where I wanna add parallel compression on my full drum bus. So that is the first way you can work parallel compression. But the trick is to work with this little guy, the mix knob, which is gonna blend the dry signal with the wet signal. So the wet meaning the fully compressed signal. Now to get the best result out of parallel compression is to just over compress your signal and this is what I'm gonna do here so I'm gonna just set that up right away and I'm gonna use the same compressor for the rest of this video um, so attack I'm gonna bring the attack fairly fast and then um, uh, the release also is gonna be like you know a bit fast also so I think that is gonna be good and uh, you know a high ratio okay so let's just uh, overdo it I'm gonna add a lot of input so I just want my signal my sound to be over compressed so let's have a listen to what that sounds like when it's over compressed first that is the raw recording all right so if i add my compressor at 100 percent wet doesn't make any sense but if we blend it okay with the mix knob I'm just gonna blend that down to maybe 25% or so
Now, by blending the dry signal with the fully compressed signal, I get a bit more energy, and that is one of the goals of using parallel compression. So this is one way you can do it. You can use the mix knob to balance the dry signal with the wet signal. Find your sweet spot, and then uh, you're going to be good to go. Now, the second way you can use a parallel compression in Cubase, and this is how I usually work, is to use a NFX channel track basically a send effects channel so i'm going to right click and just uh, click on add effects channel to selected channels and uh, i'm going to keep this one empty i'm going to call this one uh, uh, p dot comp okay for parallel compression click on add track and then i'm just going to insert or just move my current compressor straight as an insert on this fx channel track on my main channel i'm going to make sure if i click on send on the send tab i'm going to make sure that i have my signal going straight into this fx channel track so this way I can send a copy of my dry signal straight into this compressor channel. Um, so the compressor though needs to be at 100% wet. So I want this channel to be fully compressed. And then it's just a matter of blending the amount of compression with the dry signal. Okay, so this is another way you can uh, use parallel compression. Now, something you need to pay attention to, and this is a common mistake that I did and that a lot of people will tend to do, is to forget about the, uh, the pre or post fader parameter that we have here in Cubase. Um, we have the choice to send our signal as a post send or as a pre send. By default, this signal is going to be sent as a post fader signal, meaning that uh, the signal is going to be sent to the compressor to the effects channel track after the fader. So if you bring your fader level down, it's going to send less signal to the effects channel track. So let's try this out and just focus on the compressor gain reduction level. Okay, so that can create a problem if you're doing some automation on your drum bus. If you want to bring the general drum sound lower uh, in the verse, for example, and you want to bring that up during the choruses, that will change the relationship, the level relationship you have with those two channels. It's going to affect the signal, the amount of signal you're sending into the compressor. And that, of course, is going to affect the overall drum sound and tone. Uh, so you have to be careful with that. So to avoid this, something you can do is to just switch from post fader send to a pre fader send so this way if you bring your fader down the amount of level sent to the effects channel track is not going to change so let's go back and look at our compressor but now we still have a problem if we're starting to automate this channel, the drum bus channel, again, we're gonna change the tone of the overall sound because now by bringing down the level of our drum bus, uh, we're just gonna hear a bit more of the compressed signal. And this is again, not something we wanna do. So we need to keep those balanced together. So something you can do is to simply select, select them both and just link them together. Uh, or you can use a VCA fader also, that can work. Or just link the volume also, that can also work. And uh, this way you can just automate the VCA fader. So the relationship, the level relationship between those two channels are going to be the same, are going to stick together, uh, which is perfect for drum automation. Something else that can be done is to use, like I do, I have my uh, main mix drum bus. Um, this is part of my template. If you want to know more about this mixing template, you can check the link on top or down below. I have a free 
course uh, talking about how to build the perfect mix template. Um, so I have a mix bus for every main instrument. So one for drums, one for bass, guitars, keys, and vocals. Then that will go to my main stereo output. So essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure that the output of my main drum bus is going straight into my main mix bus. And this is the channel that I'm gonna automate if I need to bring the general level of my drums higher or lower. So this way all my post level relationships will stay the same. I actually made a video specifically on this topic. If you wanna watch it, I'm gonna leave the link on top. Uh, so this is something you can do, but this is very, very important to, uh, to understand what you're doing here by sending a copy of your signal into another channel, like an effects channel track. Okay, next, there's a third way you can use in Cubase is by using several outputs. Um, and what I'm gonna do here, first of all, let me just uh, uh, click on the rack on top and uh, make sure I have direct routing active. And this is only for Cubase Pro, by the way. And that will give me this new tab called direct outputs. Um, so what I'm gonna make sure is that if I look on the top right of my mix console, I'm gonna make sure that direct routing summing mode is checked on, okay? And then I'll be able to select another output for my main drum bus channel. So let's create a new one. I'm gonna go into under project, I click on add a track, and this time I'm gonna create a group channel track. I'm gonna name this one again, p.comp group, uh, click on uh, add track. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it stereo. Now I'm gonna use this group channel track as my parallel compression channel. So let me just uh, drag my uh, compressor on this uh, track. Uh, and at the same time, I am gonna just uh, unlink those channels that I linked earlier. Okay. So I have this channel and then I have my main channel. So I'm gonna click on direct routing right here. And as a second output, I'm gonna select my P-Comp group channel. I'm gonna activate it. If they are not both activated, again, you can click just on the uh, shift and click on the second one, or just make sure, like I said earlier, that uh, direct routing right here, uh, direct routing summing mode on is checked on, uh, and you'll be able to, active, uh, to activate more than one output. Um, so this one is going to my group channel, and the output of the group channel is going to my mix bus, the main mix bus that I have on my session. So I'm gonna bring this one down. Let's have a listen. Now, if I bring my main drum bus level down, I'm gonna get less signal sent to my uh, my second output. That is normal. So it's gonna act like a post fader effect send. Okay, so again, something to keep in mind if you're doing it this way. Like I said before, you can simply create another group after this, uh, those ones like I did right here and use that main channel to do your uh, level automation on the drum bus. So those are the options you have to keep that relationship, that volume and post the fader relationship going. Um, and then there's the last one, okay? Uh, which is something that I actually never use, but you know, it could happen, um, which is to go straight to the basics, okay? Uh, let's do it on the snare because this one is not gonna be very useful for a full drum bus, but on a single channel that can work. It's basically to make a copy of your original signal and add a compressor on this one. So let's use my snare in this case and using the overcompressed compressor on this channel as an insert and blend this channel all together. And same thing with that, you know, you need to make sure they are linked together once you're happy with the blend. Um, VCA fader can work, you can group them together on their own uh, snare group channel, something that I do on my end. 
and uh, or just link them or simply link them together just link the volume so this is a very simple way you can use to add parallel compression on a single channel now my own preference is to use parallel compression on an effects channel track as a send effect this is usually what i do if for some reason the channel I want to send parallel compression to, um, I don't have any more sends available. In that case, I will use a second output. So that can be useful in this case. Uh, but apart from that, I am going to use an effects channel track to manage my parallel processing. Um, now, sometimes it's going to happen that I'm going to use the plugin itself a straight uh, as an insert on my channel and use the mix knob. Um, the advantage is that you don't need to set up any other channel. Everything is within the plugin itself. Itself, but the uh, the advantage of using a separated channel or an effects channel uh, or group channel track uh, for that matter as a parallel compression channel is that you can also on top of adding a compressor you can use also an EQ you can EQ the signal uh, that is going into the compressor or that is coming out of that compressor or add some saturation also add a bit more color to that uh, parallel uh, compressor channel and blend that with your dry signal. So this is the advantage of using parallel compression on another channel rather than using it as an insert straight from the plugin itself. So there you go, my friends. Those are the four ways you can use parallel compression in Cubase and also the difference between parallel compression and insert compression. I hope that was helpful and useful for you. If so, share and like. Leave your questions and comments down below and don't forget to subscribe if you are new here. Until next time, take care and see you.